Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano and I am a chef on a mission. Today's mission is Truth in Menu. And you can go to my website truthinmenu.com to watch all kinds of videos uh, on restaurants that I feel that have been fabricated what their actual food is and where it comes from. See, in my opinion, it's the chefs and the restaurant's responsibility to have to be truthful of what they're serving customers and as a customer you have every single right to know what food you're eating and what you're paying for so if a chef is going to throw a term in wild um, or something else or organic and it's really not and charge more money for it especially if they charge more money for it that's really deceptive and it's really unethical and unmoral and, and in some states it's highly illegal to do things like that in Florida it's a five thousand dollar fine like per infraction of mislabeling fish but chefs do this all the time. If you walk, go to that website, truthinmenu.com, you'll see that I there's a long history that I that I that I talk about and call people out for misleading you on what you're actually eating, and it's done all the time. Now, as a professional chef, I know the right questions to ask. A regular consumer like yourself may never know the right questions to ask, so you're just going to believe them for what they say, okay? And most customers come to me, friends say, I had this at this restaurant, this at this restaurant. I'm like. It's impossible. It's not in season unless it was frozen or, or you know, it's just th that grass-fed beef there is just, I don't think they're doing that. It's not the farm. does That farm doesn't produce grass-fed beef. That packer doesn't produce grass-fed beef. I know this. And a little bit of research, I can confirm this. But the average person just takes for granted, especially if it's a celebrity chef. One of my most controversial videos on here is where I asked Tom Clicchio to do an, an apology for serving Gra labeling grass-fed meat that clearly was not grass-fed meat and I was had eight call phone calls to the restaurant spoke to somebody in the kitchen spoke to the butcher spoke to a kitchen manager I was told spoke to the manager and all they kept saying was this is what it, it, this, it, this is it this is grass-fed this is grass-fed this is grass and they argued with me but until I put a video online then all of a sudden they put a public apology out to me and say thanks for catching our typo when it really wasn't a typo they I spoke to a kitchen manager and he said this is what the salesman told us well, no, go on to the website of the company or the farm, the packer, and take a look because it clearly doesn't say that. It's a totally misrepresentation. But chefs do this constantly. Wild salmon is a very, very uh, uh, likely culprit all the time because chefs just think because something's from the ocean that it's wild. But it's been farm raised in an ocean in pens. But the, the concept or the, the, think, the thought process, they just don't know sometimes. And a lot of times they just do it because they know they can get more money for it. So Forbes did a great article on Kobe beef. Now I removed the word Kobe off my menu years ago. We used to have something called American style or American Kobe. And we even removed that off of our menu um, because it's just simply not what we think it here is in America. And the problem is, here's the first problem. There's a lot of restaurants you can go online right now and you can go into restaurants, and big restaurants, very famous restaurants. And I'm gonna mention some of them here that I found their menus online that are current that have Kobe beef, that lists real Kobe beef, and that are charging sometimes outrageous prices. Here's the fact. As of 2010, you can no longer import ja any Japanese beef into the United States. Foot and mouth disease, everything's been banned. 100% banned, it hasn't happened since 2010. So anybody who has Kobe beef from Japan on their menu, or any Japanese beef for that fact right now, is lying to you, unless they bought a frozen stock and I was able to find one person in LA who has f had stuff frozen for over two years and he says it's Kobe I'm not sure if it's exactly Kobe based upon this article in Forbes it's not Kobe um, and I'm gonna explain that in depth but he's charged this guy's charging like fifteen hundred dollars a pound and he won't do wholesale because he knows nobody else in the country has Japanese beef now I'm not saying other Japanese beef is inferior to Kobe. Kobe has done a great job. Kobe's a region in Hagao that's done a great job on not only trademarking but building their reputation as a really high quality, high end, hand raised, premium Japanese beef. There are other beefs in Japan that will rival Kobe, even outperform Kobe. But as of 2010, you can't get them here in America. It's just impossible. Although. In a Twitter conversation I was having with the chef from Kraft Steak, 
just as of two months ago, as of February, I'm looking back at the tweets here, as of February 2010, he actually tweeted to me that he calls Japan every week and gets, his, gets a beef shipment from Japan every week. You can't even bring Japanese beef back in your luggage. Okay, it's hot for personal consumption. You cannot bring it back in, it's not allowed. So here's a chef going on Twitter publicly saying that I can get Japanese beef and this and that, I mean, it's just not the case <laughs> at all. Another chef fabricating or lying, and he wouldn't have a debate with me because he cut the conversation off once he got in over his head. But Forbes magazine, um, Larry Olmsted did a great article on America's biggest food scam, the great Kobe beef lie. And here it is, I'm gonna sum this article up, It's maybe 10, 15 pages is three parts here. Um, in Japan, to be Kobe, it requires a pure lim lineage, lineage of uh, Tagamayagu breed of cattle. That's the only breed allowed. When we talk of the term, of, we've heard the term Wagyu a lot of us, American Wagyu, Australian Wagyu, American Kobe Wagyu. Wagyu means Japanese cattle, Wagyu. So anything in Japan could be Wagyu. So we can... I'm not, now, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that some of these uh, American domestic Wagyu or Kobe producers, I'm not saying they're not doing high quality beef, because some of them are doing extremely high quality beef, and some of them have good lineage. But the word is being abused by a lot of people as well, by a lot of salespeople, by a lot of chefs, and by producers. But there are some producers that are really, really, really good out there. I'm not going to take that away from them. But... It can't be classified as real Japanese Kobe because that obviously doesn't exist here in America. The animal must have been born in Hagayo and thus raised on local grasses and water and terroir its entire life. It must also be processed in a, in a Hagoyo slaughterhouse, none of which ever were approved for exporting to the U.S. Let me repeat that. None of the slaughterhouses in Hagoyo, the only place where you can have true Japanese koboi, have ever been approved for importing or exporting into the U.S., okay? There are only 3,000 head of certified, Japan, uh, certified Kobe beef in the world, and none of them are outside of Japan. They're all in Hagoyo, okay? The process is so strict that when the beef is sold either in restaurants or stores, it must carry the 10 digit identification number so customers know what particular <laughs> cow it came from. The tag, the, 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 the cow it came from. So it's actually like a VIN number on a vehicle. With only 3,000 cattle, you know exactly where it's come from. I've seen a lot of Japanese quote unquote Kobe at trade shows, in restaurants, from vendors, and I order Japanese beef here myself that's been highly marbled and never ever once have I seen this 10 digit identification code. So what did we get prior to 2010? We definitely were getting Japanese cattle. We definitely were getting something that might rival or even surpass Kobe, but Kobe, it was not, okay? Now I'm not saying that Kobe's the, the seal to all, the gold seal. Kobe is very good. They built a, a great deal building their reputation, their trademarks, and their patents, which none of those are protected here in the United States. None are protected here, which is why chefs and restaurants and places can use throughout the term Kobe and not have it, not have any repercussions. The word champagne carries a lot more clout. Champagne is coming from a specific region in France, from the region of Champagne. And Champagne has gone after and tried to sue American producers who've tacked on the word champagne on their sparkling wines. And they've been very successful at doing this. But Kobe, this is not the case. It's not protected here in America. Um, let me just go through this article a little more. Um, so he clearly states in here that you cannot buy Japanese Kobe, um, nor could you ever have bought it here uh, in America, not in restaurants, not in stores, not via email, uh, not, not via the internet. It just simply was not available because it was never, true Kobe was not allowed here. Now you see the term Wagyu. Wagyu is, that term I said means Japanese cattle. And that there's a lot of different breeds that fall under Japanese cattle, okay? You can have Holstein, which are dairy cattle that fall under there. You can go to the American Wagyu. I mean, this, Larry Olmsted really did a great job and he's outlined a lot of things. And I suggest you look up this article and read it if you really want to get more in depth, more than my video is doing. Um,
So he really says, he points you to the American Wagyu Association, and the website of the AWA, American Wagyu Association, clearly says the term Wagyu includes anything from Angus to Holstein. Holstein or dairy cattle, okay? But the purpose is that the, that the, the, the selective breeding of American Wagyu. So, I'm not, like I said in the beginning, I'm not saying that what the, a lot of American Wagyu producers aren't doing the right thing or, or have an elevated level of beef. They might be. But you really don't know what's going on unless you get on a website or go visit a farm and, and the farm or the website is very transparent. And a lot of websites are transparent, but a lot of them are not. And a lot of them might just be like a label they're slapping on, like a co-packers label that we're just contracting out and it's not their really, really farm. You know, one of the best ways to understand that you're getting true or better high quality American Wagyu is by going on to a website, seeing the whole transparency and being able to buy directly from the farm. A lot of times you'll buy from a broker, a packer, somebody else who they don't really own the farm. And this is done with all kinds of beef across the board. Chances are all the beef we eat, not all the beef, but the majority of the beef we eat in America, it's, just, it's Tyson that, man, that, that, that has 7,000 contracted farms. So Tyson really doesn't own the farms. Tyson's not the producer. Tyson just buys anything on the open market in the auctions, has contracts, brings them in, and just slaps their label on it. IBP, the same thing. They just buy them, finish them in a feedlot, and then slap their label on it. So the best way is actually going to a farm directly and buying where the actual farm is marketing their product that they have owned for its entire life of the cattle. So that's the best way to really get, and get in a conversation, really get in a conversation with them, and they'll tell you if, if they're doing the right thing. So let's talk about some restaurants here that still have Kobe, with no quotes, just Kobe on their menu. Um, here's one, Uncle Jack's Steakhouse, um, New York City. Uh, let's see if we can find uh, where this is in here. Um, Kobe Beef. Uncle Jack's is the only steakhouse that specializes in Kobe Beef, which is known throughout the world for its incredible flavor, this unique delicacy, and hand massage with sake to ensure tenderness. Kobe Beef is also aged 21 days and served at the absolutely peak of flavor and tenderness, cooked to perfection and served in its own juices. Market price. They're charged, probably charging a lot. Uncle Jack's in New York City claims they have real Kobe Beef. According to Forbes in the article here, no such thing. Um, let's see. Uh, here's another one. Prime 112. Is this in Miami? Um, let's see what's going on on this menu. I believe this is Miami. Kobe beef sliders. $25 for Kobe beef sliders. Those are uh, little mini hamburgers. 25 bones. Uh, doesn't say anything about American cow or anything. Just says straight out Kobe. Old Homestead Steakhouse, New York City. Let's see. I pulled this up because they had it on their website. Let's see. I think don't have things highlighted, so I can just go to these things very quickly here. But this is as of April 15th, 16th, 17th. I pulled these up, um, 2012. And Kobe steak, 12 ounces, $125. Old Homestead Steakhouse. They need to read the Forbes article. Really interesting. <laughs> do you hear this, Jamie? I do. You hear this, right? They're charging an outrageous amount for stuff. Uh, here is a restaurant. Um, where is this place at? Giovanni's. Uh, Tratu, Washington, D.C. They have an appetizer, I think I remember seeing on here. And they kind of listed it in Italian, so it kind of sounds a little bit fancier. Um, let's see here. Uh, where are we? Oh, uh, they have uh, carpaccio of, of Kobe beef. Thinly raw sliced Kobe, Kobe beef with shaved Parmesan and truffle oil. Sorry guys, Giovanni's Tratu in Washington DC. Sorry to break it to you. Um, what are the customers here if you've spent good money on these products? And you can literally go across the whole internet and find things that are all over that have, um, have listed Kobe. Here's another one. Um, Studio City, LA, Spark Wood Fire Grill, half pound Kobe burger, half a pound of Kobe burger, okay. Um, they're not charging, I mean, they're charging 15 bucks. It's not overly priced. Those other Kobe sliders we saw were 25. Um, you know, 
So, I mean, you can literally go on anywhere. Oh, here's a good one. Wolfgang Puck. Kobe Steak Sashimi. Wolfgang Puck. What restaurant is this in? Um, it's in one of his restaurants that I pulled up here uh, in California. I believe it's at his steak place. Wolfgang Puck. Kobe Steak Sashimi. You know, the biggest problem is a lot of these celebrity chefs, they're not really in their restaurants. Okay, I own a restaurant. It's a small restaurant, but I'm so busy with everything that I do that it, it's hard for me to be in my restaurant every single time. I only have one restaurant. I don't see every dish that comes out of the rest kitchen. I would love to, but I don't. I have a staff that does that. So Wolfgang Puck's not in the restaurant. These people are not in the restaurants. They hire other people. Tom Colicchio's not in his restaurants. They own the restaurants or have rights to the restaurants or whatever, but they're not really in the restaurant all the time. So they hire people. And they don't know, the, I mean, maybe they brought them up through their system, you know, through their, through their restaurants and promoted these people. And they might know them 100%, but sometimes you don't know people who you hire. And people just aren't in depth. They're not going to take care of the place as you would as your own. So Wolfgang Puck might not even know this, um, you know. Um, and if he knows the, the, the logistics of Kobe, may, he might tell his chef there, let's get this off the menu. This isn't right. You know, who knows what's going on. But it's really a shame. So... I'm not saying don't support American Kobe or American Wagyu. Kobe's really the wrong term to use because you wouldn't say American Champagne. You wouldn't say American Cognac. You wouldn't say American Bordeaux. You'd simply say Bordeaux or you'd say, you know, uh, a blend of five different grapes that they would traditionally grow in Bordeaux is in this wine. That's really the more correct way of doing it. You'd say sparkling American wine or you'd say brandy from America. You wouldn't say American cognac because that's really that's not that's not correct. But see, you can see what's happening with Kobe. They're saying American Kobe. So American Wagyu. I would say you know still support it. There's a lot of good brands out there. Ask as many questions as you possibly can. In my particular restaurant, we serve something that has very strict Japanese lineage. It's called Akaushi. Akaushi is a breed. And often we have customers that will say to us, "Oh, your Kobe burger was great," and I have to correct them and say, "I'm sorry, it's not a Kobe burger." It's not an American Kobe burger, it's not Wagyu, it's specifically Akaushi. Akaushi is a specific Japanese breed. It's raised here in Texas, in America. They have a couple thousand heads. They started with 11, 11 head in 1994 and they've grown this head. It's pure lineage from Japan because they brought 11 head over in 1994 when there was you know, that loophole in the trade agreement and they were able to bring over 11 full grown Akaushi cattle. I tell the whole story and it's great, but I'm not telling anybody it's Kobe. I'm not telling anybody that it's from Japan. It's a Japanese lineage. 100% Akaushi race here. And, and you know, so really, the more a restaurant is honest to you and tells you the story, the more believable it is. So if you were to go to a restaurant and say, what, what, where's this wild salmon from? And he says, the ocean, you'd be like, gee, that's not really a good enough answer. If they said, oh, it's from Bristol Bay and it was line caught or neck caught, it's from Bristol Bay, it's in season right now, the season just opened, or the season's ending right now, we won't have it in a couple of weeks. See, that's more believable. The more descriptions they can tell you, the more believable because the more information they have. I ran into a, a restaurant that claims that because their fish was from the ocean, it was wild. And I said, but there's farms in the ocean. There's things, there's things are out there in nets and they're in farms and pens like feedlot. But that's the ocean. Isn't that wild? Well, no, it's not wild. So really ask a lot of questions if you're, um, if you're going out to eat. And make sure you're, you have every right to know where your food comes from, all the ingredients that are in it. Whether there's MSG in it, sugar, corn syrup, you have every right to know that. A restaurant, if you ask them, they need to tell you. If not, you complain severely. You can actually go complain to, to there are certain ways you can go and complain to the agriculture department this night if you feel that they're mislabeling things. Um, whether it's grass fed or whatever, you can file a complaint. Um, ask as many questions and you have every right to know how it was cooked. Was it, was it grilled? Was it fried? Was it pan fried? Was it cooked in olive oil? Which I don't recommend. Watch one of my other videos. Cooking in olive oil is one of the stupidest things you could ever do. Uh, quote unquote from Dr. Barry Sears from the Zone Diet. And I've known this all along, but he really tells you why. Um, so I hope this blog was helpful. I hope you don't get ripped off. I mean, I can't stand when I go to restaurants and I just see them lying about everything or, or certain things and they're purposely doing it. I'm so careful in my restaurant where all my food comes from, where the story comes from. Meeting the people who produce my food is a high priority. I can't do it with everything, but I can do it with a lot of people. And the more local I buy, the more I can do that and the more stories I can tell and the more pictures I can put on my websites and the more videos I can shoot at farms and it's a really great way of doing business. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano, truthinmenu.com. Thank you for watching.